Hey, it's Keith from Outlaw Speed Shop, and I'm working on my Losi 22S drag car. So, <laughs> what's kind of funny is I destroyed this body to begin with. Um, I took the Camaro body that it came with off, and I got a Proline uh, Z20 or IROC Z28. I painted it up, did the uh, the T-tops, and as you can see, I did uh, a little bit of time on the roof and totally messed this up, which is fine. Well, I have a, a backup. This is mainly for testing. So out of the box, this thing was pretty good. Um, I ran it last week. I didn't record it. Uh, it was the first time out and doing any kind of hits whatsoever and overall the car was good um, the, the stock tires that come with it are actually really nice the only issue is is they balloon so if you're gonna run the body um, make sure that you put some tape I put a couple pieces of Gorilla Tape and you can still see it's it was wearing out and they put these wires right here <laughs> so um, you know you might want to tape it back a little bit also which I didn't do but <clears throat> I haven't really run the body um, this side wasn't as bad um, I just actually put another piece of tape over here but I'm not really using this body the other thing, if you're going to run this body that I noticed, you have to bring your, your mounts in the back. If you raise them up a hole, I think it comes uh, with one hole showing. I think I've got it up to either two or three uh, when I was running this body, and it helped tremendously. Keep a little bit of the rub away. It's not as bad. Otherwise, after a couple hits, you're going to have paint worn out on your body. So that's not, not good when you have a brand new body, especially, I mean, these things are pretty slick. As you can see, I didn't spend any time on my roof. <laughs> so, put this back over here. So anyway, so this. Uh, the other thing I noticed on these this Proline Camaro body is I had to raise the front up um, just a smidge because what was happening is I, as I was going down, as I got up to speed, I was catching here. So I also ended up, I didn't want to go up any higher on the post, so I ended up just trimming about three-eighths of an inch all the way across. And that uh, solved my problem. So I went up went up one on the post from stock, and then I ended up trimming this about three-eighths. So um, as you can see, it's a nice straight cut. And I did it out in the field, so because I was getting pissed. Because um, it got to the point where I got up to speed, and this folded underneath and literally flipped the car like that. And, I did like a triple Lindy. It was uh, it was kind of funny, but that was one of the ways I got this all scratched up. So, anyways, that's that. So, I ran yesterday. I ended up going back to the stock tires for now. I was I actually got the best results with the stock tires, um, and I'm only running. And shame on me because I did that yesterday. And I left my um, battery plugged in. <laughs> so this is what I'm running right now. I've got um, some more batteries coming in that are uh, 130C. And I'm expecting those to be much better. But with this battery, okay, 50C is what I use in Mud Boss um, for oval racing. 5,000 milliamps, 2S which is our, what we're going to be running at our local um, track is stock, box stock. So you're allowed to change the gearings here and here. You can obviously change sh um, spring, shock oil, stuff like that. And you can run any kind of a battery as long as it's got the stock type connectors. Um, other than that, it's box stock. So as this was, according to my, my GNSS, the fastest I went 
and I didn't take a screenshot of it because I was uh, an idiot, <laughs> to say it lightly, was I did uh, 2.9 seconds at, f I want to say, f either 49 or 50 miles an hour, which isn't that great. Um, but it went straight. So I tried these tires, and, and the whole thing with drag racing is is just test and tune. Um, you just have to go out there and see what's going to work, what's not going to work. Play with your slipper, you know. Um, I believe it's out five or six turns from the factory. I just kept turning it in, turning it out, turning it in, just making hits and seeing what was happening. I also had to play around with my pre-stock um, shock spacers here. So it was hooking to the right uh, last week. This week it was hooking to the left. So by just swapping these out um, the opposite direction. So if it hooks left, I, for me personally, I found taking one out of the right helped and vice versa. If it's hooking left, you know, take it out the opposite side that it's hooking to. Ultimately, it shouldn't be hooking, and you can kind of adjust a little bit of that here. And then <clears throat> yesterday, I also tried, I had some, I used to have a drag slash back when they first came out, and then nobody was doing drag racing, so I sold it. But I had some reaction tires. Uh, these are the orange dot. Um, I know blue dots are, are preferable. I just happened to have these. These were all that were available a year and a half ago when I bought them. And these kind of sucked. Um, the great part about these is they're belted so they don't balloon at all. I had no ballooning, even a little bit. And they're also much wider. So you have more of a contact patch, but it doesn't really matter if they're not slick. Now there was no prep, I mean literally no prep. Um, I did nothing to these tires. Um, I scuffed them up, put them on the track. Then a buddy of mine, Chris, gave me these Drag Race Concepts. Um, these are more uh, similar to the stock, um, what do you call them, the Mickey Thompson's that come with it. So they're the same, same dimension. Um, these weren't bad, but after a couple hits, they're just, they're not sticky. Um, again, no prep, no nothing. Um, we're allowed to use prep, but you have to do a burnout before you race. So, um... I'm trying to get it to hook without it, just to see where my times are before I go crazy and start worrying about other stuff. So that's kind of where I'm at. So this week, um, what I want to do, now that I've run it, I've got a baseline. I'm going to take my shocks off in the back and the front. I'm going to top off, check the oils, and put in stuff that I know what's in there. Um... Not that I don't trust Losi, but I've heard horror stories about shocks not being filled all the way. Um, a buddy of mine found that, um, I don't know which side, but one of his front shocks, the clip had come out on the inside, so it was just kind of uh, floating in there. Um, these seem pretty good. They're pretty consistent. There's no droop whatsoever in the back of these. Again, I haven't done anything. If you can look, you can see, you know, there's nothing. And if anything, it angles up. So what I want to do is check the shocks. And I want to pull the diff out and put diff oil in to make sure I know what's in there. So I'm going to probably go with uh, 500K. That seems to be the uh, what people are using. I don't know how much of a difference it'll make. I don't know what's in there from the factory. Um, I wouldn't trust it anyways. So I'm going to take all that out, do that. And then I'm going to go out and make some more test hits. Because there's a race next next Saturday down at Hobby Quarters in Foxborough, Mass. Um, I'm located up in uh, Upper Central Mass, so it's only about a 45-minute trip for me. Um, I don't know if I'm going to race. I'm definitely going to go down and check it out. I haven't been to a race yet, and I want to make sure I understand what's going on, how to do everything, um, so I don't show up looking like a complete idiot. Um, the only other thing I've done is I've lowered the wheelie bars. The problem is, is no matter what, when I launch by watching my videos... I'm still, I'm not getting enough power to raise the wheel, so I'm never really touching the wheelie bars. I mean, I know it looks like it, but that's more from me spinning out and crashing. 
than anything. So um, I'm a little concerned with that. Uh, the only thing I did yesterday to get those speeds that I got is I took the stock stock out and I put a, I want to say it's a 21 tooth. And that seemed to help. I had a lot more um, top end speed, which helped me get to the 49, 50 miles an hour that I was getting. Um, I think I can do a little bit better. I'm going to have to play around, go up a tooth, go down a tooth. Again, it's the same thing. you got to, you know, test and tune, see what works. And obviously track conditions, temperature, um, the surface, everything makes a big difference. And the only way you're going to learn that is by testing and going out and trying different things to see what's going to work. Um, you know, a, a hot condition or as more, tr more prep gets laid down on the track, you're going to have to maybe back off your slipper clutch a little bit, a quarter turn, a half a turn. And the only way you're going to know that is through experience. And you can only get experience by going out and testing. You can't just go on a site and say, hey, my car does this. I want it to do that. Every condition is different. Every track is different. And not everybody tells you the truth of what they're doing. You know, um, I'm going to make sure I follow along in this series with everything I do. So the next step for me, the next hit will be with 500k diff fluid I'm gonna put 70 weight oil in the shocks the rear shocks and I will have a um, 130c battery that's coming in this week and I'm going to um, try with these tires which are the stock Mickey Thompson's and I've got uh, blue reactions coming in and I've got the Cyril um, uh, yellow and purple coming in for tires, uh, the pre-mounted ones, the VXL. So I want to make sure, you know, I get some baselines. And as I test and learn, I will let everybody know and keep you up to date. And I'll take videos and kind of follow along. I'm completely new to this. Um, I'm sure people have lots of advice. If you've got tips or tricks, um, realistic ones that, you know, you're not just saying you're doing something but you're actually running a you know, a 3c battery um, we literally have to run a 2c battery so this is for those people that are trying to get into the box stock class that are looking for uh, to learn as to learn as i learn because <laughs> uh there's a lot to this i know it's just a straight line but you don't just press the trigger and go there's 90 percent of this is set up 10 percent of it is driving in my opinion um, you've got to be able to read the track and the track's going to change as the day goes on, um, either getting hotter or cooler, depending upon when you're running and where you're running. We're in New England, so the, the nights tend to get a little cooler. Um, the tracks will obviously gum up with, the you know, some prep. Overall, I think this will be a good experiment because once I get this dialed in, then I want to start building um, some sort of eliminator, street eliminator car. And I will also take you along that journey. Uh, I know this is a different um, genre from what I'm used to doing. Um, I'm an oval guy for RC, uh, mainly street stock. And this is something that I wanted to get into for a long time. I finally have the means to do so. And I'm looking forward to it. And I know it's not die cast cars. And if that's why you came here, I'm sorry. Um, I'm still doing them. I just haven't had the time. To, to to work on them so um this hobby sucks up every spare minute of your time especially when you don't have a lot of spare time so so anyways that's where i'm at um, i hope you guys found this somewhat informative also um with the spec box stock class we have to run the stock controller so another thing i found before i before i close this out is your steering rate okay I don't know why I always point with my middle finger. Your steering rate, I found that f for a run, I turn it almost all the way down. Then when I'm done the run, I turn it up so I can turn around and come back. And then before I start the next run, I put it back. Coincidence, peace of mind, I'm not sure. But it absolutely helped on a run, keeping it straight when that power kicks in about a third of the track in. Um, helped for me. Um, but and I'm where and I am running at 100%. This is the stock controller we have to use for this class, whether it be 
box stock Losi or box stock uh, Traxxas. Uh, with the Traxxas, obviously, you have to turn any kind of additional controls off so that you don't have launch control or stabilization or whatever. Um, we can run the DR10, we can run the Traxxas Slash, and we can run the the, uh, the 22S. So, looking forward to it. That's going to be in Fitchburg, Mass. They're hoping to start up pretty soon, and I want to make sure that I'm ready for this. And I'm going to take you along for the journey. And if anybody asks, this is what I'm using is the GNSS. I bought this back when, I don't know, two years ago when I had the um, drag slash. Um, helpful tool for testing. Uh, it's a small price to pay. It's an app, goes on your phone. Um, it fits perfectly right here. <laughs> I just have it Velcroed in. So. so anyways, I hope you guys find this somewhat informative. And I will make a playlist for the 22S drag slash on my channel. If you guys are interested, make sure you subscribe and follow. And as I come up with new stuff, I will make sure I post it. And thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.